Egyptian Writing and Art by Mr. Amster. Before you begin, please make sure that you have a sharpened pencil or a pen and a highlighter. The Egyptian Written Language. Hieroglyphics is a Greek word, which means sacred, hiero, inscriptions, glyphics, sacred writing, basically. There are over 2,000 characters, and you think we have it rough with 26? They are mostly picture-like symbols. Each picture can have either a semantic, they can actually mean exactly what the picture is, or phonetic meaning. They have a sound that goes along with it. They were created as a way to keep track of the growing empire's wealth. And there are two types that are similar but not but often mistaken for them, and they are hieratic and demonic. Demonic was still known when we found the Rosetta Stone, and it allowed us to transfer the Greek to demonic, and eventually we learned the meanings of hieroglyphics. The earliest known use was 3100 BCE, and you'll see some as high as 34. And there's a lot of talk on whether it is earlier than Sumerian cuneiform or not, but as of right now, it is not. It was eventually banned in Egypt around the 4th century CE by the Christians, who thought it to be a, a language of demons. Please take a moment and highlight sacred, hiero, inscriptions, glyphics, semantic, and phonetic meaning, and picture-like symbols. It was written on walls, stone tablets, or papyrus. In fact, the Egyptians created a type of ink that would write specifically on papyrus. Papyrus was made in about 3100 BC, but really around the same time that they come up with the writing. It's made from the papyrus plant. It's a water plant, but it's only durable in paper form in dry climates. Humid or wet climates destroy it. Paper today even gets its name from the word papyrus. Hieroglyphics are very versatile and can be written can be written in rows, columns, left to right, right to left, up and down, down and up. Confusing, huh? The trick is to pay attention to how the, the, col the, row, the columns are set up, or their rows. You'll see. In 1799 CE, the Rosetta Stone was found by Napoleon's troops, and it held three separate texts. On top were hieroglyphics, then there was demonic and Greek. Demonic and Greek we could already read and translate, but the reading of the hieroglyphics allowed us by knowing the two others. They realized it was the same thing, and thus the world of hieroglyphics opened up to us, and we were able to read what was on the tombs of the great pharaohs. If you're willing, try and translate this. But before you do that, can you please highlight only durable in dry climates, papyrus, very versatile, Rosetta Stone, found by Napoleon, holds three separate texts. And if you want some help translating it, here's, here's the next one. And here's an example, a simple version of how to translate hieroglyphics, although I will give you a more detailed version later. If you would like to try to solve it, please pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Egyptian art. Egyptian art 
from all of the time periods follows the concept known as frontalism, which means that the head of the character is always drawn in profile or a side view, while the body see is seen from the front. This is thought to be the best view from their perspective. Royalty is often drawn higher on the scale or larger, looking over onto the subjects, and the same could be said for the gods. Color is also very important, especially with gods. You need it to be able to identify them. Black and green? Definitely the god Osiris, god of the underworld and vegetation. If it's red? Oh, it's gotta be Seth. God of chaos, deserts. Pardon me. Blue, the sky reflected in the Nile to represent divinity. Now, this is where it gets kind of interesting. Darker colors often represent males, while lighter colors represent females. And I'll show you what that means in just a minute. Craftsmen, though, were not allowed to sign their work. Partially that is due to the fact that many of them worked in teams. And the best ones were known anyway. People knew who they were. Please take a moment and highlight royalty drawn higher and looking over subjects. Egyptian art style called frontalism. Color very important, craftsmen not allowed to sign their work. And here is an example of Egyptian art. There's Osiris, and he is above all of his subjects looking down. And here you can see a male and a female, with the hieroglyphics telling the story above it. Here is again the Narmer palette that you learned about earlier. Notice how Narmer is above everybody else? The end.